And let's see here. Okay, and for today, I highly recommend you go to uh, Canvas, uh, go to dry lab number two and download this data sheet here. It's the first page or just have it on your phone one or two. Uh, and I'm gonna have this on the test. So your test is gonna be Saturday, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. Okay, and test one. All right, I wanna go over scientific notation um, again here. Now the purpose of scientific notation is to make awkward numbers less awkward. And that's very subjective. Some teachers will tell you, I want everything that's over a thousand or under a thousandth in scientific notation. They'll give you very specific guidelines regarding that. Others will just say, put everything in scientific notation. And with me, it's I'm leaving it up to you. If the number's awkward for you, convert it. If it's not awkward, don't convert it. Let me give you an example of, of uh, a problem. For example, um, Convert that number to scientific notation. Well, hmm? Seven, uh, eight, what's yeah, she goes like that, right? Yes. Okay, which is more awkward for you, left or right? Yeah, second one's awful. I mean, it is in scientific notation but it, it's awful. So anything to the zero power is one. One million to the zero power is one. So one question someone asked me once, well, what is this? <laughs> I like to think of it as undefined. <laughs> it's like dividing by zero, undefined. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that. <laughs> um, so, to me, and most of you said that, that is significantly less awkward than the seven times 10 to the zero. Okay, now just as a review on scientific notation, this number here is a number from one to 9.99, in other words, one to 10. And this is a base 10 exponential number. Now, when you press EE -E on your calculator, that glues that together. Because if you take a number like If you don't use the EE function on the denominator, the bottom number, your calculator, being as dumb as it is, thinks you're multiplying this up here by 10 to the minus 10th, when in fact you're dividing it. So when you do the EE, it glues those together. The other way to do it, if you don't want to use EE, or if you have a calculator that's got the little um, exponentiation box, little tiny thing there, uh, you can use parentheses. So if you did it this way, then your calculator will know that that bottom number, the whole thing is to be divided and you'll get the correct answer. 
but it's a lot more keystrokes. This bottom number has got one keystroke to do that. This has got one, two, three, carat, four, five, six strokes. If you feel more comfortable doing it this way, do it this way. But just remember, anything on the bottom, put in parentheses. Top doesn't matter. Um, her, her question was, what about the top? You can put parentheses there if you want. Um, but see, your calculator is going to multiply that times that without parentheses. It's the bottom that's the problem. And it's because as soon as it sees the times, it thinks it's up here. But when you put the parentheses in, it knows it's down below. So that's the way you've been doing it, right? Remember from last one? Yeah. So you've been putting parentheses in the top? Yeah, so you don't, so you don't need to do that. Just the bottom. <laughs> All right, if you're going to report something in scientific notation, though, make sure it's proper scientific notation, meaning that number is from 1 to 10. Actually, it's not 10. It's 9.99999. And you've got a base 10 exponentiation. Okay, so there are four main types of problems we're going to be running into until we get to unit four. Up until then, you're going to see four different kinds of problems. Okay, number one is going to be metric. Metric conversions. How many milligrams are in 12.1 grams, for example? Dimensional changes. How many ounces are in 29 grams of salt? It's going from grams to ounces, ounces to grams. Two dimensional, three dimensional problems, square feet, cubic feet, those kind of problems and how to convert from a one-dimensional conversion factor to two-dimensional or three-dimensional. And then lastly, what to do if your answer is a fraction. And you start with a fraction. Now, last time I gave examples of all these four and your um, dry lab two are gonna do the same thing. You have examples of all this. Okay, does everyone understand those four categories? Is there any? Okay. All right, so let's start doing some examples. Now, the metric conversions frequently give students problems. And it has to do, in my opinion, with how
the metric system is um, uh, introduced. Um, and then subsequent to that, what are the conversion factors jumping around to different metric units? And there's two of those for each metric unit. For example, this is a nanogram, a billionth of a gram, and how many, this should be an NG here, not a DG. <laughs> DG is decigram. Okay, so there's, so you can either go one nanogram is 10 to the minus ninth grams, one conversion factor, <laughs> or there are a billion nanograms in one gram. Both of those are valid conversion factors. Now, remember conversion factor, The numerator and denominator have to be equal, no exceptions, because that equals one. So when we change from say nanograms to kilograms, all we're doing is we're renaming that quantity. Quantity doesn't change. It's just the naming of it changes. And because of that, by multiplying by one, we're not changing the quantity. We're just renaming it. Does that make sense? Just renaming it. That's all we're doing. Some people would say, well, that's easier done than. <laughs> so every time we have a metric unit, we ha automatically have two conversions. So here's one conversion here. And then, of course, you always have the inverse. So that's one set. The other set is so there are four of them, really two in the inverse of each one of those, okay? Now, some people would rather use this one than that one. Doesn't matter. Use whatever one you like to use. Or you can get used to using them both, but doesn't matter which one you use, they're both. So one nanograms, 10 to the minus nine grams, 10 to the ninth nanograms is equal to one gram. Those are all valid. So a typical metric conversion problem this laptop is on its last leg. The keyboard and battery, the battery will last two minutes. The keyboard, I sometimes it won't type. Other times I have to hit it a bunch of times. So I bought another laptop, but it's like getting a new phone. It takes hours to convert everything over. Such a pain. That's what I'm doing at home tonight is converting this guy. This guy, except for the keyboard, I always have it plugged in. This thing's like eight years old. Um, it's, it's never giving me any trouble except for the battery, which batteries don't last for eight years. Um, Get a new battery is about 120 bucks. So the question is, do I invest 120 bucks on a new battery and still have a keyboard bad? Or do I spend, you know, like 700 bucks and get a new laptop? So I went with the new laptop. So the problem is I got to devote the time to do it. I keep all my data 
on an external um, SSD. So that's easy. Just plug in the new one. It's it's the applications. Uh, I used to teach photo. Uh, I used to teach um, Adobe products up in Washington, mainly Photoshop and and Premiere. Um, so I have all of those I have to download onto the new computer. Um, and then I've got, you know, OneNote and Zoom and all that stuff. So, yeah. so anyway, um, so as I'm typing, See how it did that? Okay, so we're working with milligrams. I'm running out of real estate here. A milligram is abbreviated MG. And we'll be using those two conversions. So there's a thousand, a thousand milligrams in one gram. One milligram is equal to 10 to the minus three grams. Now, um, some teachers, if you're going into 1A or 2A or 3A, they're going to have you memorize these. So if you do enough problems, you get used to using these. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to give you this chart for your tests. But, but just be forewarned, some people like you to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, some people have you memorize half the periodic table. Guess what? You have a smartphone. You have a periodic table available 24 7, 365. Why memorize something you have access to? I'm old. You know, I told you before, I'm like 74. I like technology. Why do the. Anyway, I don't believe in massive memorization. Um, I believe in doing lots of the work. So you end up knowing some of this stuff just because you use it a lot, not because you're memorizing it. So, okay, anyway. Um, so let's go down here. All right, so. All right, so what's given here? Well, let's see here. Um, that's given, and we're trying to calculate grams. So given goes on the left, grams goes on the right. And we use one of our conversion factors to go from milligrams to grams. Okay, so. That's one conversion factor and the, its inverse. And that's the other one, it's inverse. So remember, givens always, no exceptions, always have to be canceled. So what needs to go on the bottom is the given so that it cancels. And we're trying to calculate grams. And lo and behold, we happen to have a conversion factor that's got both milligrams and grams in it. So it's a one step conversion. Okay, question now is which one do we wanna use? Can you use that one. Now, 
when you think you understand a conversion factor, you need to look at these and see if they make sense. Okay. Which is bigger, a gram or a milligram? Gram. So if a gram is big, this number here has to be small. If this number is small, and this number needs to be big. So when you write down a conversion factor, just look at it and see if it makes sense. I've noticed a lot of people will put 10 to the minus three milligrams over one gram. See, 10, if you look at that, it doesn't make sense. So we have milligram smaller than a gram. That means the number next to it has to be big. 10 to the minus three is not big compared to one. One is the big one, okay? So that's why that one doesn't work. Okay, so we have Now, do I need a calculator to do this problem? Well, if I wasn't using my calculator, the answer is So is that my answer? Obviously, it's a setup, you guys. No. <laughs> What's wrong with that answer? I mean, this number here? What's wrong with it? Well, the number has to be from 1 to 9.9. .9. It doesn't matter how many decimal places. We've got um, three sig figs here, three sig figs there. So that part's okay. It's just that this isn't, so I have to convert this to proper scientific notation. So that means I'm moving. So I'm going from 23 to two. Okay, that means I'm dividing by 10. So that means I have to multiply by 10 to make up for it. So this is the answer here. Another way to do it is to convert this to some of you. I noticed some of you last week were doing converting that to that and then go to here. Either way it works fine. But the bottom line is don't leave it like this though, as you'll get dinged. So again, setup is worth 90%, answer is worth 10. Yeah. And why change the 23 to two? Because it's not proper scientific notation. And you're right, it's, it, all we're doing is renaming it. It's not changing the quantity at all. But if you're gonna leave it in scientific notation, make sure it's proper scientific notation. One, to 9.999. So if it's smaller than one, convert it. If it's bigger than 9.999, convert it. Now, one quick note here. Um, you can move exponential numbers 
across the fraction bar. For example, I can move that 10 to the positive three across the fraction bar. If I do that, the chain, I have to change the sign of that number. So if I move this guy, up there, it now becomes 10 to the minus three grams over one milligram. Well, some people do the scientific notation problems by moving everything up to the top line, exponentiation wise. Uh, I think it's, most of the time, people just put these numbers in their calculator anyway. So to me, it's a waste of time. But some people never taught that. And that's what they do, which is fine. It works every time. It's just an extra couple steps. That's all. Yeah. Is that in your calculator? How would you check yourself on that last part where you said it's not 23.5? It's 22 point, I mean, it's 23.5. You said it's 2.35. How would you check yourself without using a calculator? Uh, convert it to the a non-scientific number. Okay. And then convert it. So then it would become 2.235 instead of the 2. It would become 0. 0.0235. 0. 0.235. Yeah. And then to convert to scientific notation, you need to convert the 2.35 to 2.35 times something, which means you're moving your decimal place over, over two places. Okay. And, uh, that's the way you check it without a calculator. I need to know more. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense, though? It, it does, but I, I would have to test it. I, I'm a hands on person. Um, on dry lab number one, there's a, um, um, there's a series of exercises you're doing exactly that. I think it's on page six and it's C. Yeah, that's the one that I had questions on. The one I said optional. Remember? Oh, okay. Are you in Saturday or Friday? Uh, Friday. Okay. So what you have yours out? Is it page six? Hmm? No, okay, it's not six. It was um, page five, five C practices that. Okay, so that's a typical metric conversion problem. You gotta first identify the conversions and then what's given, what are you trying to calculate? Given on the left, calculate on the right, conversion factors in the middle. Okay, so, um, now, if you were to put this in your calculator, it was going to give you proper scientific notation. So, I mean, you've chosen that mode on your calculator. Some calculators have a button called mode, and it goes engineering, which you don't want because they do things differently. They don't use scientific notation. They use engineering notation, which is different than scientific notation. Just make sure you're on the scientific. Or the other one is flow. And that's non-scientific notation. So your calculator do it for you. So. All right, so let's do another one of these and then we'll go on to some of these others. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, I just refilled a prescription.
Okay, my last meds were 12.5 milligrams of hydrochlorohydrazine, which is a, a diuretic uh, per dose. How many kilograms is that? Okay, so given 12.5 milligrams. I'm going to calculate kilograms. So um, metric conversion. So the problem now with metric conversions, and you have a chart, normally there is a base unit for everything. The base unit for math, mass is a gram. The base unit for um, uh, dimensions is gonna be a meter. Um, let's see, um, meter, kilograms. Um, what's the other one? Um, Volume is going to be liters. Um, so when we're doing this problem here, we're not using a base unit. We're using milligrams and kilograms. When you're not using a base unit, it's not a one-step conversion. So if this was just in grams, for example, well, we can relate grams to milligrams. There's no straight conversion from kilograms to milligrams. So it's going to be a multi-step problem. In this case, it's going to be a two-step problem. First, we go to the base unit. So we convert this to grams, and then we convert the grams to kilograms. And some of you are going, we can, I can do that in one step. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And on the test, if you did it in one step and missed it, you would not get any credit for setup. If you got an answer right, that would be fine. Okay, so 12.5 milligrams on the left and kilo on the right. So the first step is cancel our given. So we have to have milligrams and we go to the base unit, which is grams in this case. So I'm gonna use 10 to the minus three grams or in one milligram. Okay, so that gets us to grams. Now we're going to go from grams to kilograms. So the grams have, have to cancel. So that means it goes on the bottom and kilos on the top. And there are 1,000 grams in a kilo. Okay, without using your calculator or anything, you've just earned 90% of the points. Okay, so you can grind this out in your calculator. Let's see, if I was going to use my calculator, I wouldn't use a calculator to do this, but if you were going to, you would go 12.5 times... Now, putting 10 to the minus 3 in there, there's a couple ways to do that. You can hit EE and put change sign 3. And then you're going to divide by EE 3. So you don't have to put one, like in this here, you don't have to think of it like that. You don't need to put the one there. It's implied. 
Same down here. You don't have to put the one there either. You can if you want. Uh, it won't make any difference to the calculator. Okay, and the answer is... Now, all of you should try this problem and see if you get the same answer using whatever method you want. You can use EE. You can use 1 multiply 10 caret chain sign 3. Make sure you have parentheses you're not using EE down here. So your calculator knows you're dividing and not multiplying. The calculator um, turned out to this. So I just, you know, because it is negative three, I just did these two so negative two, negative five. Is that how it works? Yeah, but this is incorrect. It's incorrect. Yeah, because if you convert the way you have it here, it's going to be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2. Mm -hmm. Not this. How would I put this in the calculator? Okay, so you're doing it old school way in this guy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go 12. Where's your time? Oh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> Um, 10. <laughs> and where's the care? Oh, okay. And then um, negative. Three. negative. No, that's not negative, though. That's subtraction. Do you have an, a change sign on here? Okay. Um, do you have a change sign on yours? Um, there it is. Oh, okay. Negative yeah, so this is subtraction. Change mm -hmm. sign is, you're just changing the sign of whatever it is. And it's another different operation. So, um, okay, and then um, divided by 10. No, I got it. Okay. I'm wondering if you, um, instead of using change sign there, you use subtraction. I wonder. That may be why it's different. Okay. You... Is this one that I can elaborate might be a good one here? So we're given three significant figures and then throughout the entire thing, it's all defined, right? But right. the answer we get out is two significant figures. Would we still want to convert that to three, even though it's a lower? Yes. Okay. In her, um, his question was, if your um, set of numbers says your answer should be three sig figs, when you do the calculation, you end up with a number that's two sig figs, convert it to scientific notation and add a zero, and that'll kick your answer up to three sig figs. That was your question, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what I want you to do. Okay, so with scientific notation, you have a very nice way to move the precision of your number around a lot. Like if we need, if this enter should have been five sig figs, we just add two more zeros there, that'll give us five sig figs. Or if you don't have scientific notation, sometimes it's a pain to do. Sometimes you can't do it. So the scientific notation really comes in handy when you're when you're fussing around with sig figs, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. So um, you can add the one. Um, I just didn't. <laughs> to be consistent, I should have. 
We either add the one there or don't add it, but don't add it there either. So ones are ones and zeros are kind of throw around numbers and math after a while. Then with your calculator. If you're gonna put in four point zero zero in your calculator, don't put the zeros in, just put four in. So yeah. Allowing me to do this like in um, the 10 to the 3 kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to go. Let me clear this guy. Okay, 12.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, one way to do it is to put in a 1, which you don't need, or just EE change sign 3. And then you're going to divide by um, PE3. And you have an interesting answer here. Because when you did the second, you didn't go up. Like, you know how the zeros pop up on the top, right? Here, let's do this again. 12.5. Twelve point five. I'm sorry. I don't want to, um, times e e uh, change sign three. Oops. This is weird. Um. Times one e. Divided by um, one e three meaningfuls. And if you go to um, where do you, where's your mode on here? Where is your, all these stupid calculators are slightly different. You should have a mode button on here, which changes from scientific notation to floating point. Oh, right here. It's a shift four or shift five. So if we go shift five. Just put the one in and then do the easy. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to. Yeah. But apparently, this guy, you have to. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, okay. All right, so <laughs> it makes sense now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, is everyone okay with this calculation? It, let's see. Well, it's kind of for 12.5. <laughs> three uh, oh change oops, oh, sorry uh, change sign so the problem with yeah yeah so let's okay so let's do this again okay 12.5 times ee -E, uh change sign uh, <laughs> Change. All right. Uh, I can try posting that. Yeah, I can try change. I just don't that Yeah, no, that's very. <laughs> Not very many, but my own. I remember the first day that I was here, I was able to get an answer. I just don't know how. It was just like, yeah. Now you cannot use this on the test, though. Sure. Yep. Um, let me loan you a calculator, right? I'll probably buy one right after. This. Okay, but for now, let yep. me loan you one. Then and figure out how to do a change sign. All right, you're right there.
Okay. You got a question, right? So milligrams, smaller in grams, right? So that means this has got to be a big number. This one's going to be a little number because this is bigger than that. This is bigger than that? No, grams are bigger. Grams are bigger. So what is the bigger numbers? If this is bigger than that, then the, yeah. this number has to be smaller than that. So it goes small, big, oh, small, big. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. Better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's do some more of these problems here. Sorry to spend so much time in that. I just wanted to make sure everyone getting the same answer. Okay. Um, all right, so let's um, go to another type problem here. See, um, Okay, how many square inches are in 12.5 square meters? Now, this problem, bless you, is a metric conversion, number one. Number two, it's going from an imperial system to the metric system. So those are two conversion steps. So square inches and square meters. Let's go on our table. And there are none. So we have to make them. And we're using the linear measurements to make the square measurements. Or if I said a cubic, we'd be using the linear ones to make the cubic ones. All right, so given, calculate. Oops. Going from square meters to square inches. That's two dimensional. And there are a lot. These numbers can get, conversions for these can get quite large. Because you're going to have to square or cube these numbers. Okay, so first thing we want to do is what? Well, we've got to cancel the given, right? And then Okay, so we've got There's a couple ways to go on this. We've got feet and meters and centimeters and inches. Notice the centimeters and inches is bold-faced. That means it's an infinite sig fig. The other one is not bold-faced. That means that's three sig figs. Okay, so bold-faced means by definition, sig, uh, infinite sig figs. Okay, so which one do you want to use? 
Which one? Okay, we're gonna use the centimeters, all right. So we're gonna convert the square meters to square centimeters. Question is, and whenever we do this, We're using this property of exponents. So if we square 100 centimeters, we're going to end up with 100 squared square centimeters. One squared is what? One square meter. OK, that'll be our conversion factor. And now we're in square centimeters. So to get if we're going to square that, we need to where all items, so, and also we need the inversion of that because we need the square centimeters to cancel. So once the square meters cancel, once the centimeters squared cancel, we're left with square inches, which we want to calculate. Okay, now. Now, the misstep in this problem is here and here. It's, it's a basic linear problem, but it's just squared. So we have to square everything. Yeah. No, we squared that too. 2.54 squared. Yeah, I get that. But now that 100 on the other side has already been squared and you're going to square it again. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? No. If it was linear, there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Just on a yardstick, right? Okay, but if we're talking about square centimeters well, <coughs> in a meter, we've got to square this as well. Just um, like this here. Everything is squared. Everything. Is that better? Just, if in doubt, square everything. <laughs> um, that's why these numbers are going to get big. These numbers seem bigger than they should be at first. But it's because and if you look at a... Um, like, how many milliliters are in a liter? Thousand, which seems big compared to, you, know, you look at a, um, um, a liter of water, that's like a quart, and there's a thousand milliliters in there. It seems like a lot. That's because it's a cubic measurement. And a milliliter is defined as cubic centimeter. Now, the lab, lab three is a wet lab, it's your first wet lab. And one of the things you'll be looking at are things like precision of various devices. 
one of the things you'll be going back and forth on metric system stuff, milliliters to liters and all that stuff. Okay, so our problem is set up now. Okay, our uh, givens cancel. We have our conversions from uh, meters to centimeters squared, from centimeters squared to square inches. Now to work this problem, we're gonna go, now we're not gonna square the 12.5. That's given. It's already been manipulated. So we're going to leave it as 12.5. So we're going to go. So it's 12.5 times. And you can do this a couple different ways. One way is to go 100 carat to, oops, here's the carat. Okay, um, times 2.54 carat So, Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. So my calculation is, I'm going to start over again, 12.5. Okay, everyone go ahead and try that. Make sure you have 194 and of the four. Did you get it? I don't know if that answer. I can't understand in You mean the conversions? We're just taking linear ones. These are all one dimensional, just length. But we're working with squares, though. So that's why we have to square everything. I like to see it as like the centimeters cube is the whole unit. And so when you cancel both of the meters out, you're canceling those squares out too. Yeah, exactly. It makes it a little easier. So that's the whole thing. This is given. Okay. Square meters. So you don't square the 12.5. You have to square the conversion factors. So the linear conversion factor for centimeters to meter, you have 100, 100 cents in a dollar, 100 centimeters in a meter. You're supposed to, that comes off of here. That's right. Yes, if you use mine, electronic dry lab two, it'll look like the one up there. Huh? Okay, so the bold face ones are by definition. So those have infinite sig figs. And the non bold face ones are, for example, um, Sorry, from the, from the, 
It's down here. Oops, sent you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Are we all okay in this number? Okay. Doing the calculation. The other one is how to get the conversion factors. This part here. These, in my opinion, are not intuitively obvious at all. Bless you. Okay, so let's do, are there any more questions on this? I'm gonna do a couple more of these. Are you okay with this guy? Okay, so let's kick this up to three dimensions now. So we have given as that, we want to calculate cubic inches. Now, when I say cubic, I'm talking three dimensions now. Think cube when you see cubic. So we're going to do the same logic we used up here. I'm going to take this guy and make it a cubic measurement. So that's 2.54 linear centimeters okay we're going to convert that to a cubic measurement so it's going to be And cube everything. Okay, so that, that cancels our given. And we need to go from centimeters cubic centimeters to cubic inches. So again, all we're doing is we're cubing it. Yeah. Needs to be cubed here. Um, do what now?
Um, no, it uh, it has to be um, to a common base, like base ten or base base E or something like that. Um, the most straightforward way is using your calculator. Just hit caret three. So you can try that if you want. See if you get the same answer. So his idea is moving the two point fifty four across the fraction bar, meaning it'd be 2.54 to the minus three exponent. Normally they, they do that with common bases like base 10 or base E. Yeah. This here. Yeah, I mean, remember, conversion factors, the inverse is valid as well. So it can be this or that. So all conversion factors have an inverse. So you're going to use the one where the cancels, the cubic centimeters has to cancel, which is the inverse of that one there. Okay, so the cubic centimeters now cancels, leaves us with cubic inches. So let's we'll see what this is going to be now. You can see that number got quite a bit larger. Only the ones that you feel are awkward. See, this thing is maybe that. I mean, that's awkward. <laughs> Is that number awkward for you? Yeah. Right. It's still got three sig figs, though, because there's no decimal point. So those trailing zeros don't count. So both of them have three sig figs. So you can't change the precision when you go from floating point to scientific notation. So the precision has to remain the same. So that's when you fiddle with and the scientific notation to make your sig figs correct. Yeah. Let me see your calculator. Yeah. Okay, so you've got Oh, all these are so different. All right, let me see. Um, Okay, so instead of carrot, you're going to be using this guy here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go 12.5 mm -hmm. times 100 um, mm -hmm. 
three. Now this is the tricky part. You have to get out of the exponential notation with a right arrow. Oh, I have been doing that, but I don't know. Like I still didn't get the right. Like I would put the I would put that three and then the right arrow. I was just like, I think I'm missing something else. I don't know. Okay, show me how you did it. Okay. So it'd be like twelve point five. Is do I divide by the one still or just leave no? Don't worry about the one. All right, you didn't divide, multiply the two point fifty four cubed. So, <laughs> at this point, do I hit divide? No. You need to... Yes, now hit divide. Okay. Divide key right there. Now put in the 2.50. Because oh, I'm not following where that happens. Like, how does that happen? I don't know. Why it's dividing? Yeah. Because it's in the, in the bottom. Everything in the bottom is division. So this is nothing anymore. I don't look at that. Well, it's one. Yeah, you don't have to worry about one. If you put the one in there, it's, it's not going to do anything. Because one times anything, it's changing. And cube it. Got the same number. And then can we do the previous one or we'll do that in lab? Mm -hmm. This one here? Yeah. I didn't I didn't get how to do that one either. You're gonna do it just like this one. Get the divide key down here. You probably didn't you just put it in. So see the calculator thinks you're multiplying that's on the top. That's why it has to be on the bottom, and you get it on the bottom by hitting the divide key. Oh uh, okay. okay. So Summarize. Everything on the top, hit the multiply key. Everything in the bottom, the divide key. If there are three things in the bottom, you're going to be getting the divide key three times. Okay. Okay. All right. So while we're waiting, look back to the other one and do that one the way we just did that one. Let's see if we get the answer right up. All right. How are we doing? Okay. So how are we doing? Um, I'm going to do one more quick one because you got to go to lab. Um, and that last one is going to be fractions, okay? So we're starting with, we're inputting, I mean, a given our, um, it's a fraction. Given is a fraction. If you're given as a fraction, that means your answer is gonna be a fraction. And when you start with a fraction, you really have two problems. The first problem is to convert the numerator to this numerator, kilometers to miles. The second problem is converting the hours, seconds, 
two separate problems all jammed in there, okay? So what do you want to work on, kilometers or hours? Kilometers, all right. I'm going to get kilometers to miles. Okay, so... So how many kilometers are in a mile? Okay, it's not bold face, so that means it's four sig figs, 1609. So now we're in miles. Now our next job is to convert the hours to seconds. Now in this one, the hours has to be on top. If it's on the bottom, it's not gonna cancel. Okay, so now we have miles per second. So the way we're gonna work this, we're gonna multiply, we start with 23.5, because everything in the bottom now, we're hitting the divide key, divided by one, 0.609, divide again by 60, divide again by 60, enter. We're going from fraction to fraction. Two problems. This one gets us to miles. These two gets us from hours to seconds. So you're going to see examples of all four of these on dry lab two. All right. So, oh, I want to warn everyone, tomorrow is a museum day. So there's going to be a zillion kids over there tomorrow. <laughs> Just, so parking is going to be challenging. Now, you guys can park in the faculty parking lot. I didn't tell you that. Particularly on Saturdays. Particularly on Saturdays. <laughs> 